this video is on Bell's palsy. So here we will see what exactly uh, happens in Bell's palsy, which nerve is involved and which muscles are paralyzed and what are the signs and symptoms in Bell's palsy. We will also look briefly at the differences between the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron type of paralysis of this particular nerve. The nerve is facial nerve. So what exactly is Bell's palsy? It is lower motor neuron. So we have to uh, concentrate on this term. It is lower motor neuron type of paralysis of which muscles facial muscles and due to compression of facial nerve so here the nerve involved is the facial nerve the muscles which are paralyzed are the one which are supplied by facial nerve that is the muscles of facial expression the facial muscles and which type of paralysis is this this is the lower motor neuron type of paralysis i'll uh, after some time i'll explain you what exactly i mean by lower motor neuron and upper motor neuron now the site of lesion that is usually near the stylomestroid foramen. So where exactly this stylomestroid foramen is located we will see after this. Then etiology of this. We don't know exactly what is the cause, what is the reason of uh, Bell's palsy here. But probably uh, it is due to some viral infection. Let us look at upper motor neuron and lower motor neurons where exactly they are located. The word motor itself suggests that these neurons are involved in motor pathways which are responsible for contraction of voluntary muscles or skeletal muscles. Now upper motor neuron as the name suggests they are located in upper parts of the central nervous system the uppermost part is obviously the cerebral cortex so upper motor neuron will be always located in the motor area of the cerebral cortex coming to lower motor neurons their cell bodies for cranial nerves right they will be located in their motor nuclei right where exactly they will be present they can be present either in the midbrain pons or medulla for facial nerve the motor nucleus is located in the Pons. Now the upper motor neurons they will synapse with the lower motor neurons which are present in the motor nuclei. The lower motor neurons they will constitute or they will run in the cranial nerves like in this case in the facial nerve they will come in contact with the muscle fibers of the facial muscles and lead to muscle contraction. So in case of Bell's palsy where is the lesion? lesion? The lesion is in the lower motor neuron that means in the facial nerve itself. Let us look at uh, the site where uh, the facial nerve may get compressed. So for that uh, we can see in this picture there is this is the styloid process. This process is the styloid process. This bony process is the mestroid process and there is a foramen between these two which is known as stylomestroid foramen. The name itself suggests styloid process anteriorly, mestroid process posteriorly. These are parts of temporal bone. So here we have the stylomestroid foramen and the facial nerve leaves the cranial cavity by passing through this small foramen that is stylomestroid foramen. So just at this side or slightly above that the nerve may get uh, compressed due to some infection right and then the facial nerve will enter the parotid gland and will give five terminal branches which will supply the muscles of facial expression. So let us look at the characteristic features on the side of the paralysis. Now suppose the left facial nerve is compressed just above the stylomestroid foramen then the muscles of the left side of face they will be paralyzed right. So let us look at the some of the signs that will be uh, obvious. These are the first one is facial asymmetry right. So here what happens you can see on the normal side the face is drawn right and this is because of the unopposed action of the muscles here. So facial asymmetry that is the first thing. Then second we will start from above and then go downwards. So second will be loss of horizontal wrinkles on the forehead. You can see on the normal side the horizontal wrinkles these will be absent on the forehead on the left side. Then third would be inability to close the eye right or this all happens because of the paralysis of the facial muscles. I'll tell you exactly which muscles are responsible for which sign. 
so inability to close the eye and this fissure which is known as palpebral fissure palpebral fissure is what palpebrae means eyelids right so this fissure is present between the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid when they cannot be closed this fissure that will be uh, widened next is overflow of tears which is known as epiphora now the lacrimal fluid has to uh, go from the lateral side of conjunctival sac to the medial side and when you blink at that time what happens this uh, lacrimal fluid that enters into the nasolacrimal duct so when uh, you lose the control of the muscles which help in blinking so the tears are going to overflow and this condition is known as epiphora i'll once again repeat these signs first is absence of horizontal wrinkles on the forehead the inability to close the eye widening of palpebral fissure and overflow of tears which is known as epiphora next we have here nasolabial furrow there is a fold which appears between the nose and the upper lip so that will be also absent we can see on the paralyzed side sagging of the angle of my mouth that will occur or the muscle which will be pulling the angle of the mouth upward the levator muscle they will be paralyzed so sagging of angle of mouth next is dribbling of saliva from the angle of mouth right the mouth cannot be closed properly so from this side there will be dribbling of the saliva from angle of mouth then accumulation of food in the vestibule of mouth there is a muscle which is present in our cheeks which presses the cheek against the teeth and this space between the cheek and the teeth and gums this is known as vestibule of the mouth so when we chew the food right during mastication some of the food goes into the vestibule and this muscle presses the cheek against the teeth and this food goes back into the proper oral cavity so when this muscle is paralyzed there will be accumulation of food in the vestibule of the mouth next is when the person attempts to smile it will draw the mouth towards the normal side then again because of unopposed action of the muscles on the normal side then we have loss of corneal reflex what is corneal reflex if cornea is touched by accident or with dust particle or anything strong wind also if it is there then what happens you just blink you close your eyes now you cannot close the eyes actually what happens is the uh, sensory information from the cornea is taken by ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve right and the efferent pathway right that will be via the facial nerve which supplies here the muscles which close the eye right so we have lost that efferent part so because we cannot close the eye so there is loss of corneal reflex also so let us let me revise the lower one here so nose of nasolabial furrow sagging of angle of mouth dribbling of saliva from angle of mouth accumulation of food in the vestibule of mouth when a person tries to smile the mouth angle of the mouth will be drawn towards the normal side and loss of corneal reflex now let us see which muscles are responsible for some of these signs so here we can see some muscles there so let us look at this first is facial asymmetry why it is there as i've already told you uh, on the normal side the muscles will not be opposed they will be able to contract so muscle, uh, the whole uh, face appears as if it is pulled towards the uh, normal side second is loss of horizontal wrinkle why it happens we can see here this muscle which is present here in the forehead this is the frontal belly of occipito frontalis muscle this is when it contracts that is going to produce the horizontal wrinkle so frontalis because of para paralysis of frontalis we have loss of horizontal wrinkles on the forehead next is why the patient is not able to close the eyes you can see here this muscle which is present around the orbit here this is known as orbicularis oculi oculi for eye and orbicularis it is like an orbit so because of the paralysis of the orbicularis oculi the, the eye cannot be closed on the paralyzed side then uh, loss of nasolabial furrow here the levator muscles right which up elevate the upper lip right so they are paralyzed because of that paralysis of levator muscles of upper lip this leads to loss of nasolabial furrow here 
next the dribbling of saliva from the angle of mouth now in the uh, around the, in the lips and around that right we have a muscle which is known as orbicularis oris oris is for mouth and this is also like an orbit so when this muscle is paralyzed the mouth cannot be closed properly there will be a gap between the two lips there right they cannot be articulated against each other so because of that there will be dribbling of saliva from the angle of the mouth and sixth is accumulation of food in the vestibule of mouth this is because of the muscle present in the cheek that muscle is the buccinator muscle so buccinator muscle is paralyzed and as a result there is accumulation of food in the vestibule of mouth now let us briefly see what is upper motor neuron paralysis or you also call it supranuclear lesion of the facial nerve i have already told you where do we have the nucleus of the motor nucleus of the facial nerve it is present in the pons right so upper motor neuron also you know exactly from the cerebral cortex if there is any lesion here vascular lesion are more there in the cerebral cortex or along this pathway maybe uh, the internal capsule when it is passing that time also there can be a lesion till it reaches the nucleus of the facial nerve this kind of paralysis will be known as upper motor neuron paralysis that means upper neuron upper motor neuron is affected and when the neurons which are present in the nucleus maybe the nucleus doesn't get some blood supply because of uh, lesion of some uh, artery there or if the lesion is anywhere in the facial nerve then that is known as lower motor neuron paralysis now how the upper motor neuron paralysis of facial nerve is different from lower motor neuron paralysis of facial nerve in this we can see here this is the upper part of the face right now the muscles which are present here they are controlled by not only the opposite side of the cerebral cortex but also of the same side you must be knowing that our cerebral cortex right that has a contralateral control that means most of the muscles of our body right they are controlled from opposite side of cerebral cortex right so left half of the muscles of our body are controlled by right cerebral hemisphere and vice versa so here also this upper part of the facial muscles or the muscles present in the upper part of the face normally they will be controlled by the contralateral side if this is right side then they should be by left side but here what is different is they are also controlled by the same side of the cerebral cortex also so let us see what about the lower half of the face now muscles which are present in the lower part of the face they actually are controlled only by the contralateral cerebral cortex so this difference one has to know the muscles of the upper part of the face they have bilateral representation in both the cerebral hemispheres the lower part of the face right the muscles present there are controlled or they are represented only on the opposite side of the cerebral cortex or contralateral side now what happens suppose there is a vascular lesion here that is on the left side so what will happen this is going to synapse here with the neurons in the um, motor nucleus of facial nerve but nothing will be affected why because the control is also from the ipsilateral side so the you will not come to know because there is something which is already controlling the command can come from uh, the right side and these muscles which are present on this right side they of the upper part of the face they will not be paralyzed they will be spared what happens in the same lesion upper motor neuron lesion to the lower uh, part of the face it is controlled it has only control from the contralateral side so what will happen the muscles of the opposite side of lower part of face they will be paralyzed okay so upper part will be spared so here you can see now the muscles of the lower part of the opposite side of face are paralyzed in upper motor neuron paralysis one you have to remember first thing is contralateral side and upper motor neuron paralysis so first is contralateral side and only which part of the face is affected only the muscles of the lower part are they are affected whereas what happens in bell's palsy that is infra nuclear lesion or lower motor neuron lesion of the facial nerve let us look at that now 
so here where will be the lesion in the lower motor neuron that means the facial nerve is affected so once this facial nerve once the neurons have reached that is controlling the muscles of the upper part of face also as well as of the lower part of the face also so it hardly matters now because the facial nerve is supplying all the muscles right on the same side of the face okay so what will happen there will be paralysis of all the muscles of the face on the same side so two things you have to remember first is in lower motor neuron paralysis which muscles are paralyzed the same side ipsilateral second all the muscles even the upper uh, muscles in the upper part of the face as well as in the lower part of the face they will be paralyzed so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again